Good afternoon. It is day 79 of our Corona confinement slash retreat. How you doing? I'm doing better, I will say. I think one of the best things about this has been the opportunity to reflect um, be, and, and to really be aware of everything we do, when we do it, why we do it, how we do it which brought me to um, a review because of especially the past difficult week and not knowing what is going to be up for this uh, tomorrow. There's going to be a full moon. So I'm wondering how that's going to affect people. Um, because, you know, everything has been very tense. I'm glad for the past couple days it has been a little calmer, which is good. Um, Anyway, I want to, uh, today is National Cheese Day. I ought to wear a cheese suit. I love cheese so much. That's the one, that's why I can't be a vegan. I love, you know, I like cheese a lot. I will say that I am working toward being able to have, uh, you know, rennet, rennet less or vegetable rennet cheeses, but they're so expensive and I'm not leaving the ground, so I can't go anywhere for that, but I do have, I'll tell you about my breakfast, which you may think is a pretty good idea and decide to try it yourself. Of course, I do it meat-free, but you know. So there's two things I really like for breakfast, and one of them is cream of wheat, and the other is oatmeal. And eat both of them, I do the same thing. I make the cereal, and I, uh, I heat up a little sausage patty, vegetarian, of course, for me. And I mush up the sausage patty and I mix it up with the oatmeal and I put in some cheese and I top it with a little, for me, soy milk. And that is just, it's kind of a cheesy grit sausage kind of thing. And so that's how I celebrated now uh, Cheese Day today. Not sure what I'll do about it tonight, but you never know. The other thing, it is um, National Safe Day. and. This does not apply to me, but it apparently applies to one in three households in the United States where there are guns. National Safe Day is the day that stresses the importance of locking up, uh, if you have any, any guns, keep them away from the wrong people, which includes especially children. So um, I invite you to celebrate National Safe Day by, if you have any guns in your house, put them away, lock them up, make it National Safe Day in your house. All right, now, today we're really gonna be looking in a couple minutes at did you get your call? We'll find out what that means shortly. And also self-care, because I wanted to remind you how important important self-care is. I have shared with you over the past, you know, few days that I didn't get enough sleep and I have, I can guarantee you, and if you look at your life, if you, uh, or start observing it from today, you're going to find the times that you are not well rested, you do the same thing over and over again. Uh, you're out of sorts, you're crabby, you say things you don't want to say, you do things you don't want to do. You eat food you don't want to eat. You spend money you don't want to spend. I got to tell you the importance of sleep and, uh, and getting to bed at a decent hour and you know getting enough restful sleep and not having to, to bolt up. You know, I haven't had an alarm clock in years and it's not because I retired. When I say years, I'm talking 30 years or more even with all the time I worked, uh, you know, um, a, a regular job, job at the job at the bank and like that. Just by the grace of God, I wake up. When it's time to get up, I wake up. I wake, oh, alarms are so challenging. So, want to stress the importance of a good night's sleep. I hadn't been getting it. And I'll tell you what I found happened from not getting enough sleep, uh, which I've, has happened to me before. I do tend to get snappy and um, not not just generally it has to take something to push a button well these days it seems like 
everybody's buttons are all exposed. You know, sometimes you feel like the picture of the coronavirus with all these little things sticking out of it. You know, button, 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 and everybody's got buttons and you got your buttons out and who knows when your button's going to get pushed. I, I mean, yesterday I had a button day and a couple of times I responded in a uh, colder way than I normally would to something somebody had said. I'm very proud of myself to say I did restrain myself in some cases and I invite you to uh, do the same things in your life, especially with the tensions today. Sometimes we have to let go with love. And uh, there's a great way you can do that if you are active in social media. A great thing you can do on Facebook is to snooze someone that uh, when you're stressed out by their posts, you just snooze them. You don't have to unfriend them. You don't have to block them. You don't have to do anything. But to snooze them, uh, you don't have to see what they're posting. And I think that's pretty good. In the event that doesn't work, maybe they're jumping on your page and saying things that you don't want them to say, then it's an excellent opportunity to unfriend, which means they can't see your posts. Um, they, they can go hunt for them somehow, but they can't just see them. And if somebody won't let go no matter what, uh, then it's a really good idea to unfriend on Facebook so your real friendship that is beyond all this will be saved. So what I'm focusing on, uh, what I learned from as tired as I was the past few days, you want to know how I spent my corona confinement, here we go. I got crabby when I didn't get enough sleep. So, and I noticed, um, you know, my dad was a big fisherman. And he had, um, uh, he would do, mm, I don't know what kind of fishing, not the kind you use worms, the kind you use lures, fly fishing, whatever. But he would have these little sparkly lures with the barbs on them. And I thought, wow, that's just like this. You know, they throw that line out there and where's that shiny object? You know, that, that whoa, that I, I bit on it and I got hooked in, in the mouth. <laughs> So think, think about those things because they're, they're really important. There is a scripture, and I wrote it down, so I'm going to be reading it. It is from Psalm 69.9. I would invite you to listen very carefully to each word. I have become a stranger to my brothers and a foreigner to my mother's sons because the zeal of your house has consumed me, and the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. We are in tumultuous times, and one of the things I feel it is most important to overcome at these times is the, uh, the sniping and snapping at each other, um, being opinion-driven, um, sometimes not fact driven you know i am what i call myself an i dotting t crossing pharisee I, I follow the rules you give me a rule i follow it to the letter i can promise you that and when somebody else doesn't follow the rules i have to uh, bite my fingers <laughs> so i don't speak um unless i have to but i mean all these things because of all the division divisiveness and the pressure cooker environment that we're living in. Self-care is critical. So that is my review experience of the past few days when I really got it that I was biting at the bait that was being put out. My friends, it's not worth a thing. It won't help you in the least. So we're going to put that behind us now, and I invite you to not put yourself in a position where you are inclined, like a hungry, too hungry fish, to snap at bait that is only going to hook you in the mouth, okay? So now we're going to get to the other part. Did you get your call? Most people, when they hear, well, I'm not talking about a phone call, so if we're not talking about a phone call, then what are we usually call, talking about? For a lot of people, they say they are called to ministry. 
If I haven't told you this story before, um, uh, I apologize. I, you're you're going to enjoy it. Uh, if I have told you this story before, I'm sorry, I'm going to repeat it. Because I think it's important, and even if you're hearing it more than once, I, I would like you to really immerse yourself in it and hear what I'm saying. I received my call to ministry in an audible word, words, in my right ear. I was, um, I was praying, I was doing my morning prayer, and I said a prayer, and the prayer had a line in it. One of the, one of the lines said, as I joyfully release my full potential to be used. And sitting there in my bed praying and having recited that line, I just stopped right there and I said, what? I raised my hands up. What do you want? What do you want? And audibly in my ear, it said, minister, unity, minister. And I was like, oh, you're kidding. My Catholic family is going to love that one. But it was not really unexpected. Now, I had to work for two years to prepare myself for, minist for the ministerial school, the seminary. And I was two years in school, dedicated, full time. And, uh, and I actually, because my house wouldn't sell and wouldn't sell, that's another story, um, I had to work part time as well. I was always taken care of. But what I want to get at is that when I found Unity, I fell in love with it. And that was somewhere around 1985. And uh, I, I was hooked. <laughs> I was hooked in a good way on that one. And it like it, I realized that everything I had done up until that point including bartending, including being a district sales manager, including working as a recreation director in a convalescent home, all of that prepared me. It was like, it was like a 30-year uh, school preparation for my real path. I don't know how many of you are doing what you feel called to do. You know, because we're all here to minister to each other. We're here to take care of each other and to live as one, the same way our organs and cells and everything. How do you know what that call is for you? I remember, you know, oh God, I was very young and I saw the movie The Sound of Music. And when the girl got her call to go be a nun, I believe, and it was a long time ago, and I thought, oh, that doesn't happen to people. That doesn't happen to people. But, and then I did. But you don't have to get an audible call to know what you are being supposed to be doing in the world as, a, as an act of devotion uh, to all that is good. And it, it, that does not have a, a clergy stamped on it. There are many things. There are people who do their job with love and joy, and there are people who hate getting up every morning. They go to their job in disgust. They're uncomfortable and miserable all day. They come home, and because they were so miserable all day, they're miserable all night. They might snap at their mate or at the kids. Uh, they might drink too much to unwind. That's not the way life was. Life was meant to be good. I've had people say to me, um, you got to work hard for a living. And I question that because I, I do a lot of things. I put in a lot of time. I always have. Whatever job I ever had, whether I liked it or not, and I am delighted to say very few of my many jobs did I not like. And I did any job, whether I was in a waitress in a donut shop or a manager of 250 Avon representatives, I was happy doing it. I never had the thought, you've got to work hard for a living. 
and I'm very happy about that. Now, if you are working just for money, if you just want the money, maybe you will have to work hard for a living. There was a very popular book a number of years ago called um, Do What You Love and the Money Will Follow. Well, I've been doing what I love for all my life. And um, I have not become wealthy by human thought. I am exceedingly prosperous, though. I'm satisfied with what I have. And I think that's, for me, better than being filthy rich and being worried about my money all the time, right? For me, it works. I have social security. I have my job that I like. Uh, I love everything I do at the campground. Oh, I don't love everything I do, but most of the stuff I do, I love. I, um, I give it my best. I, I love people. And I have my ministry. And I have my writing. And literally, it's all good. When I retired from the secular job I had at the bank, things were not going well. Um, the management had changed a lot and even though I was very happy to have that job because it helped me in my ministry and to take care of Sammy uh, who let's see I retired probably when she was about 20 21 years old so that my job was over she could now work but um, the reason I retired is that things had gotten so bad at my job I believe, and I believe it to this day as I believed it the day I decided to quit. I quit, I didn't quit, I retired. And I gave my boss 10 months head up, heads up that I was leaving. But everything was so stressful and so tense. I did, I did those 12, those 10 months. And I retired with a little, little it's a tiny retirement and my social security and I um, I am so very happy and I don't care what you got in your bank account if you're not peaceful if you're not at peace with yourself and if you don't love what you do I guarantee you you are not answering God's call for what you are meant to do in this world in this life experience you came in with gifts and talents and you are expected to use those gifts and talents for the good of the whole. When your work is play, you play all day. In the height of a normal camping season, I might be in the office 14, 16 hours. Um, and, well, I, I might be in the office for 12, 14 hours, and then I go home, I eat, and I go out on the grounds and do stories for the campers. And I love it. You don't have to work hard for a living. You simply have to do the work that feeds your soul, and your work will be play, and you'll play all day. And when you're at home, you'll sleep well and enjoy your family because you will be satisfied. And because of the number of people that are out of work, what a perfect time if you are out of work to really ponder what do you want to do. It may not be, it, you, you can't, it's like kids want to, a lot of kids you say, well, what do you want to do when you go, I want to be famous. Well, what does that mean? I want to be like the Kardashians. Well, what do the Kardashians do? What did they do? What is it that you want to do that they do that will make you like them? Being rich doesn't make it, folks. A lot of very unhappy rich people out there. You got to do what you love. You want to be a rock star? You look at those rock stars. You are not going to see the years and years and years of passion and practice they put into it. It never generally falls in someone's lap. And your gifts and skills and talents are interchangeable. And don't give me anything about being too young or too old. That just doesn't wash with me. No matter what you are, you have an avocation, which is a, a meaningful reason to be on the planet. That meaningful reason on, to be on the planet can 
be anything and skills and talents are interchangeable. Michael Landon, who we remember, in, let's see, Highway, Highway to Heaven, uh, Little House on the Prairie, very well-known actor with a wonderful, um, he had no scandals, he had none of that stuff going on, he had a good life. He wanted to be, he wanted to be a javelin thrower. And he did not ever get to be that javelin thrower. He hurt his arm. He, he, he damaged his arm. So he couldn't do that anymore. He couldn't do anything. He wanted to be a football player. Damaged his arm. He couldn't be a football player. He went with a friend who was auditioning for a movie, for, for a role in a movie. And uh, he, his friend said, oh, try out two, try out two. Well, guess who got the role? Michael Landon. And there, in that moment, a star was born. He worked hard at it. He did a, a good job, and he lived a good life. So, you know, you might have a desire to create art, to um, be a hairdresser, to be a, uh, a gar garbage car, garbage truck driver, a long haul truck driver, you want to see the world? Flight attendant, you know, I'm four foot 11, I'll never be a basketball player. But if I was so inclined, I'll bet I could find a local senior basketball league somewhere where I could participate, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to do that. <laughs> so I invite you to think about your life, what you're doing with it, with it. where is your call? Where are you going to find your call? You're not going to find it in the want ads. Well, you may find it in the want ads, but typically you'll find it easier even in the want ads if you spend daily time in, in quiet relaxation, meditation. If you communicate, think about what you love to do and then ask. Scripture says, ask, seek, knock. And another scripture says, it's from John 18, for this I have come into the world, for this I was born. You were born for a reason. I was born for a reason. I believe that I am following the path I was asked to walk. I don't know where it will branch off. I don't know if one day I'll have to find a new way to do it. But I am poised and serene, knowing that I am following the call I received. I wish the same for you. And know that I love you, I bless you, I appreciate you, and I behold the divinity in you. Have a stupendous day. Bye-bye.